slither and slide Come out in the open and they run and hide It takes all kinds to live in Buck City Some are weird and some are pretty Come on down, let's meet in Buck City Don't let them bug you There's nothing to be afraid of Bugs can be fun We're all friends here So come on down Let's meet in Bug City With Christina Ritchie Dr. Art And don't forget me Bug C.C. I'm thinking of an animal. This is a fantastic animal. Oh. I'm going to describe it to you with a few choice hints. Ooh. See if you can guess what it is. I, I, I got it. I got it. It's, it's me. It's not you, Bugsy. It isn't me. Oh. Okay, here it goes. This is one of the smallest animals on Earth, but can have the strength of one 50 times its size. Mm. It lives in huge, complex societies made up almost entirely of females. Mm. These animals herd, they farm, they build, they wage wars and take prisoners and slaves, mm. and they're everywhere around you. So, who are they? I know. My sister's kids. They're terrorists. Bugsy Siegel, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Show Business. Thank you. But back to our mystery bug. In case you haven't guessed yet, see if you can recognize her from these sweet little movies. <laughs> Allow me to introduce you to the tiny female animal who is the real ruler of the jungle. Hmm. An ant, among nature's most brilliant works, and literally the most common animal on the planet. Well, bon appetit. <laughs> Give me that. Uh, hey, you're a seagull. You don't eat ants. <laughs> yeah. This happens to be about the most successful animal in the history of the Earth. You can learn a thing or two from the ants, Bugsy. <laughs> Give me that, Ann. I'll show you success. Come Dr. On, Art! Dr. Give Art! Give it to me. Hi, Christina. Yes. 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 Yeah. Don't mind me. I, I'm not even here. <laughs> Dr. Art's an entomologist. That means a bug expert. Very uh, large, this entomomali digest. <laughs> so, Dr. Art, what do you want to show us first? I think to start with, a look at the sheer variety of skills ants possess. As you mentioned, Christina, they do herd other animals and grow crops, but they also sow, make roads, even do construction. You know, I do some carpentry myself. Uh, just weekend stuff, but top of the line, I once built a condo for a condor. Could you just breathe through your beak for a second? Actually, one minute. Some of us want to learn something. Pardon moi. While you meet these few varieties, and keep in mind there are at least 10,000 species of ants, mm -hmm. all with different lifestyles, social behaviors, appearances. These minute creatures, which are all around us, are often compared to humans because of their social lifestyle. Ants live in close-knit colonies which are active night and day, like factories that never close. Each ant in the colony has a special job, whether cleaning, gathering food, or taking care of the young that will make up the next generation. A great example of ants' cooperative behavior is found in the leafcutter ants, who live mostly in South America. Leafcutters are farmers and gardeners. Every day, the largest workers go out from the nest and find leaves to cut into pieces. With their strong jaws, they can chew through leaves that to us would be as thick as carpets. But leafcutters don't actually eat leaves. The workers carry the huge leaf pieces to their underground nests, where they hand them over to smaller workers called mulchers. These mulchers chew the leaves into paste. The paste still is not food. Now the tiniest size workers in the colony, the gardeners, will cultivate a furry fungus on the leaf paste. The fungus is what the ants eat. This is the only food leaf cutters eat, and no one else can make it, not even scientists. 
After the gardeners have done their job, another group of workers take away any useless clutter from the nest and throw it onto a huge trash heap outside, thus keeping the nest clean and running smoothly. At the very center of the nest, above all the rest of the worker ants, is the queen. She is the only one in the nest who can create baby ants, and every activity in the colony revolves around her. The queen's kingdom is protected by giant soldiers, specialized females who have developed large, powerful pinchers called mandibles to make them fierce warriors. Though ants come in an amazing array of body styles, they all have important things in common. Ants are insects, so they all have three body parts. Head, thorax, and abdomen. They also have three pairs of legs. The middle body part contains strong muscles which power the legs. The ant's head contains the mouth and two compound eyes, plus a fantastic tool, a pair of antennae with which ants find their way, locate food, and communicate with each other. But ants have an amazing ability to adapt these basic bodies to fit their needs. Believe it or not, these strange hanging globes are living ants, whose abdomens are expanded with nectar. Honey ants gather nectar when it is plentiful, and pass it to specialized sisters who store it in their bodies and feed it back later when food supplies are low. Though most ants live underground, a species called weaver ants lives in trees and builds a nest out of leaves. With strong jaws and legs, they pull the edges of the leaves together. Then, using sticky silk produced by their larvae, the weaver ants sew the edges of the leaves together. Inside these football-shaped nests, thousands of sisters go about life at a height that for us would be miles above the earth. Army ants are different from most ants in that they never have a permanent home. They are migratory, hunting and scavenging through tropical forests of the western hemisphere. These army ants are from South America. They are meat eaters and among the most ferocious of animals. Much of their time is spent roaming the forests in great hordes, searching for prey. They cooperate as a single, efficient, killing machine. Army ants will attack any creature that can't get away. By relentlessly stinging and biting in overwhelming numbers, they can kill creatures many times their size. Once the workers have dismantled their prey, they carry their loot back to their strange, living nest called a bivouac. These bivouacs are temporary nests not made of leaves or sticks, but of their own bodies, remarkably linked together. After several days or weeks, according to the egg-laying cycle of the queen, the restless army ant colony will break the bivouac and march off, under the protection of the giant soldiers, to another part of the forest where they will build another bivouac with their bodies, and set about clearing the environment of insects and other small animals and helping to keep the forest in balance. I don't think I've ever seen anything busier than those critters. I'm exhausted just watching them. Well, Christina, I've got a surprise for everybody outside. Mm -hmm. Give me a minute and then join me out there. Okay, I love surprises. <laughs> so, are you impressed yet? Hmm? What? Me? Bugsy, if you pay attention, you wouldn't be so restless. But, but, but Christina, I wasn't anywhere in that film. There wasn't a single shot of me. Come on. I'm supposed to be the star of this show. Hey, Schwarzenegger wouldn't put up with this. I'll be right back. Uh, all right. We'll do lunch one day. One thing that fascinates us all is why ants come into our homes and what they're looking for. I found some ants now and I've laid out my bait stations. Remember the different kinds of bait that we're using. Bacon bits, grass seed, wheat germ, and honey. The ants you see here are Argentine ants and they clearly prefer the fat, 
greasy bacon bits. Within a matter of minutes, they'll be circling around the bait, and then they'll pick up a little piece, and then they'll start making a line back to the nest. And while she's doing that, she's going to lay down a chemical trail, or a pheromone trail. The ants are not eating the food here. They are taking it back to the nest. They follow a trail they have laid down made of a magical scent substance called pheromones. I have a special Bug City activity for us today. Oh, wow. I always wanted one of those. A whatchamacallit? A formicarium? Well, that's not what I was going to call it. It's an ant habitat that you can build yourself, and I'll show you how to do it. This is a pencil alert. We'll put up everything on screen that you'll need to make your own ant habitat and give you time to get a pencil and paper and make a list. <laughs> First of all, we get a gallon jar and a quart jar, and we put the quart jar upside down inside. This way, it creates a narrow space for the ants to build their tunnel. What then, do they do with the sand when they build their tunnels? Well, what they're going to do is they're going to pull the sand up as they dig, and we're going to pour the sand over the jar, like so, just so it covers the jar on the inside. And then we'll shake it around a little bit and add the rest of the sand. Now ants need water. They can't dig in very dry sand, so we'll take our spray bottle and we'll mist it down, like so. And ants need water to drink, too. So it's important to add a sponge, put some water on it, and they just suck the water right out of that? That's right. Now we're not sure what the ants are going to eat because all ants eat different things. But we can add, sprinkle a few seeds, maybe a little bit of uh, wheat germ. And if you want, we can even add a little dab of honey. And you can just take a little straw and put a little dab and just put it right on the sponge. Okay. Now we're ready to add the ants. What kind of ants are those? These are red harvester ants. And we're going to put them inside. And boy, they're ready to start work. There they go. Oh, wow. Now we shouldn't dally too long. Take a little piece of material. A piece of pantyhose works really well. Stretch it out over the top. Attach it with a rubber band. And you have your own ant habitat. How long does it take them to dig tunnels? Uh, if we cover it with a little piece of newspaper, it'll give them a little bit of privacy, and the next day, you'll see plenty of tunnels. They work day and night. How long will the ant habitat be active? I mean, how long can you keep it going? The colony can't live long without a queen to replenish the workers, so this population will last a few weeks at most. I want to put some stuff away. Huh, give me a break with these ants. What do they know? Now, us gulls, Christina, we know what it is to fly to be king of the skies. Ants fly. You can't. Well, come on, get out of town. No, they can. Says who? Says Dr. Art. Art smart, Mr. Know-it-all. Mr. Hippepima. Hi, Art. Very educated guy. Also very big. You know what, Christina? We have to go back. Back where? Back to the beginning of ants. Their birth and growth, their life cycle is amazing. They live through four completely distinct phases in one It begins in late spring or early summer, when suddenly, whole populations of ants sprout wings. Both winged females and winged males mill underground in the nest, waiting for exactly the right combination of heat and humidity. Then, one day, and one day only, they emerge from the nest by the thousands and fly up. of a new colony, all of her first generation of offspring will be females. Male ants are not workers, so the queen produces daughters to take over the chores of the nest so that she can be free only to lay eggs. 
she will produce thousands of eggs in her lifetime. The queen may live 15 years, though each worker only lives a few months. The grown nurse daughters gently receive eggs from the queen and place them in the nursery, where they will be tended day and night. Soon they will become larvae. Blind, defenseless, and begging for food, the larvae are completely dependent on their grown sisters for survival. After several weeks, the larvae will spin cocoons out of silk and become pupae. This is the next to the last stage of development. Finally, the new ants will emerge as adults and begin their lives as workers. With every generation that survives, the colony becomes larger. Wow! Ants spend as much time taking care of their little ones as people do. Well, probably more time as a matter of fact, which is one of the secrets to their success. Excuse me. <laughs> so, Dr. Art, what do they eat? Oh, ants? Everything, really. The ants that we know, the ones in our homes, most of them are scavengers. They'll eat sweets, fatty foods, just like rats or gulls. Hey, okay. wait a minute. I don't need this kind of insult. But now that you mention it, uh, I could use a couple of hot dogs. I gotta go. I'm out of here! Because ants are one of the few social insects, they are unusually conscious of each other and of other insects. They even form alliances with other insects and sometimes with certain plants. The relationship between ants and these common garden pests, aphids, is one of the most interesting in nature. Aphids secrete a substance called honeydew, which ants adore. They tickle the aphids to get them to produce the sweet droplets. The ants' job in this give-and-take relationship called mutualism is to protect the helpless aphids from other insects who would eat them. For example, this ladybug's favorite food is aphids. Not their honeydew, but the aphids themselves. This ant has discovered a ladybug munching on an aphid and frantically goes to get her sisters for help. The ladybug, being a beetle, is heavily armored, but the persistent ants outnumber it. Finally, when the ladybug is forced to fly away, the ant's precious honeydew herd is safe once again. There is another amazing mutualistic relationship between certain ants and certain plants. These nectar buds are put out by the plant specifically to draw ants. In return, the ants will kill or drive away any insect, like a beetle or a caterpillar, which threatens to chew on the plant itself. This kind of plant, the acacia, not only gives ants food, but also shelter. The acacia's thorns are hollow and afford the ants a place to live and safe keep their young. Little buds full of protein guarantee that the ants will stay and will also ward off any other living thing that dares to touch their host plant. Here is perhaps the strangest of the mutualism relationships. While ants will normally attack caterpillars as competitors or prey, this caterpillar lives with ants and depends on them for its survival. The caterpillar not only puts out droplets of honeydew for the ants, but also emits a perfume called a pheromone, which lulls ants into a peaceful mood. The ants watch over this caterpillar by day while it feeds, then they gently herd it into the safety of their tree nest every night, like you'd bring a cow into a barn. There's another kind of ant that brings its caterpillar out at night to feed, and then return it safely to the nest each morning. These particular ants are so attached to their caterpillars that they will keep them and tend them even when they change into pupae and no longer give honeydew. When the pupa hatches into a great blue butterfly like this, the ants are there and gather to watch their adopted giant, as beautiful as the ants are plain, fly away to freedom. You know what? This critter is really nasty looking. I'm seeing a sci-fi monster here. For another insect or bird, they're not very attractive. Also, they're very sour. They're filled with something called formic acid. And if that's not enough, they can also bite or sting you. So who has the nerve to eat these ants? Oh, <laughs> birds. That's who eats them. We birds. Otherwise, these little monsters would overrun the planet. Hey! Congratulations.
congratulations. This must be a huge moment for you. Oh, oh. Besides birds, there's a very interesting predator that eats ants, ant lions. It's their little mottled gray larvae, hunchbacked with flat heads and big pinchers called mandibles that they use like meat hooks. Bleah. <laughs> Get out of here, dog. They make little traps. An ant falls in, and the ant lion grabs it and sucks all the juice out. As tasteful though they are, ants become a food source wherever they venture. On their mating flight, they are especially vulnerable to birds. But birds of many species will go after them on the ground, as will a handful of other predators who don't mind the ant's sour taste, such as aardvarks, ant eaters, and this horned lizard. But the most frightening predators are those who invade the nest itself. The sight of this tank-like creature is cause for instant alarm. This is a caterpillar which devours ant larvae. Its goal is the colony's precious nursery, and it has a seemingly bottomless appetite for unborn ants. No matter how the ants attack this caterpillar, and regardless of their phenomenal strength, the invader is invincible. The ants must now save what young are left. In a panic, they quickly evacuate as many larvae as they can to another safer part of the nest. Though the caterpillars have taken a great toll, the ants have an even greater secret weapon deep within the nest. The queen continues to lay eggs day and night, constantly replenishing the colony and safely ensuring its future. And now it's time for Factualities! Hey, look at the outfit. I'm an army ant. Get it? An army ant. <laughs> oh, my humor, I tell you. Hey, thanks to the big shot experts who write ant books, I have some amazing things here to report. Listen to this. Did you know ants were here not only before humans, they were here the same time as dinosaurs. And... Did you know also that a single ant queen in her lifetime can produce offspring greater than the human population of the United States? That's the truth. Hey, also, did you know that one single tiny little ant can lift 60 times its own body weight? That's like a 60-pound child being able to lift a car that weighs 3,600 pounds and then walk off with it. <laughs> Did you also know, and listen closely, a colony of the wood ant species can kill and drag home a hundred thousand caterpillars in a single day? Wow, well if you think that was something, this one will knock your socks off. That one ant colony, called the African driver ant, can contain up to 20 million individuals. And that, regarding ants, is a factuality. Now, did you know that, for instance... Hey, that when we loved having you here at Bug City. We hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. Well, wait a minute, I'm not finished. And remember, wherever you go, if you just look, you can find a real Bug City right at your feet. That's your feet. In other words, watch where you step. Glad you could join us. So long. But this bye bye. Is, this isn't fair. I, I'm not through. Uh, oh, when the lights go on again, uh, I guess I am. <laughs> well, let's see Army for you.